Howdy folks, this is Rob with MTG Investor, and I am back with just 12 hours after I put out the last Origins video. And the reason I'm putting this out is because there was some cards pulled today that I'm kind of excited about. And my first card that I want to put a watch on. Today quite a few elves were spoiled. We've already seen um, Dwynen, Guiltleaf, Dane. Today they added Dwynen's Elite, which is a 2-2 for a green and one that when he comes into play, if you control an elf, you put a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior into play. We already saw Elvish Visionary. Today we were also introduced to Gnarl Root Trapper. One black, one one, elf. Tap, pay one life. Add green to your mana pool. Spend it to play elf spell, elf creature spells. Or tap, target attacking elf you control gains death touch on a turn. This is a good way to combat the big creature decks, big dragon decks, is by giving your elves um, death touch. See, we already knew about Leaf Gilder, which is an elf druid. 2-1 for the green and one, tapped out of green to your mana pool. Wasn't really excited about that, but considering there's all these other elves being dropped in, maybe Leaf Gilder isn't so horrible. Uh, we already seen Nissa, which is an elf. We've already seen uh, Yiva's Force Mage, which is a 2-2 two -two for a green and two elf shaman. When the Force Mage enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Today we saw that they're reprinting Sylvan Messenger from Apocalypse. And I had totally forgot about this card. I texted my friend. I was like, hey, they printed an elf uh, ringleader. And my friend texted me back, uh, dude, they, it's already been printed. That's a reprint. I had totally forgot about this being an apocalypse. This this makes me wonder if Goblin Ringleader is going to be in this set since they were reprinting Sylvan Messenger. But uh, it's a 2-2 for a green and 3 elf has trample. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you reveal the top 4 cards of your library. Put all elf cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Now I don't think they particularly printed this for a standard deck. Although elves might be a viable standard deck. Who knows how many elves are going to be printed and who knows what's coming in Zendikar. But I think this this was printed for uh, modern because a modern elf deck uh, well it actually just won a star city recently but I think they want elves to kind of be a thing in modern and I think they want goblins to be a thing in, go in modern we're gonna talk about that real quick but the one card the one that I've been pleasure delaying here is shaman of the pack I love this card I absolutely love it it's an uncommon it's a green black and one it's a three two elf shaman when Shaman of the Pack enters the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to the number of elves you control. This is a really good finisher for elves. I can see this being played in Legacy in the elves deck. They already splash black typically for discard. And they, you know, they already have Crater Hoof as a win condition, like an instant win condition. But sometimes elves win by just beating down an opponent. I've seen many and many, many a game. And that's really, you know, people think of elves and they think of Crater Hoof and just combo out, natural order for Crater Hoof. But actually, elves can just straight up win by beating you down. And that's one of the great things about elves is it can, it can come at you from two different angles. You start worrying about trying to counter the crater hoof or dealing with a crater hoof, and the whole time they're just ping, 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 killing you. Well, Shaman of the Pack is just another weapon in their arsenal. Um, they can play Shaman of the Pack. They already have like three or four elves down, and bam, you're hitting them for five. And so they've already been needling you down. You've already taken damage from fetch lands. And with Wirewood Symbiote, they can just bounce the Shaman of the Pack back to their hands, recast it, 5U, 5U. Now, I was curious about what some other people thought about this, so I was I googled and I went to Reddit. There's some people arguing about its legacy viability, but I really think this is a really good card for the legacy deck. I'm not sure what to take out, but it just seems just... Man, it just seems really good to just go right in there with at least one Shaman of the Pack. Maybe two. I have an Elves deck built for Legacy, and I play tested it quite a bit. Uh, every now and then I've thought about playing it in an SAG Open, but I wind up just playing Blue-Red. It's a tough deck to master, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty fun to play. And one situation I found myself in is there'd be times where I would get my Glimpse of Nature you know, going, and i get my creatures going, but i couldn't quite get to the man I needed to natural order or hard cast crater hoof or maybe I didn't draw my Gaia's cradle like I was supposed to so I could play the crater hoof there's a lot of different ways to get the crater hoof natural order sometimes you miss on the natural order sometimes you miss on green sun but you need mana for green sun and you and you need to have elves in play for cradle and there's been many times where I could get my opponent close to dead and I could get a lot of little 1-1 one, one creatures out and every time you play a creature it costs mana but then you're able to keep reusing the creatures because you have Heritage Druid in play. I didn't quite have the mana or position to Crater Hoof but if I would have had uh, Shaman of the Pack I could have finished the game right there. 
So I'll be on the lookout for Foil Shaman of the Pack. It's 8 o'clock Friday, June 26th, and right now on eBay, I can, there are no Foil Shaman of the Packs up. They have regular Shaman of the Packs up for basically $1.50 a piece. The regular ones are great, but there's going to be a ton of regular ones, and I would definitely probably have probably two to three play sets of the regular ones just to hang on to, because it's going to be years down the road. It's going to you know, it's going to increase in value. Probably going to be a five, six, seven, maybe a ten dollar uncommon could potentially move it to fifteen if it gets played. If it doesn't get played, then it's just you know you just swing and miss. But I want to get foils of these. I suspect that when the foils are available, they're going to be priced about eight dollars. I'm guessing. I would say on the low they're going to be six, and on the high they're going to be twelve. I'm going to speculate that they're going to be eight initially right out the bat. Now, if it gets played in Legacy, those will eventually go to $25 on the foils. As a full uncommon, $25 seems to be a pretty reasonable place. 15 would be the low. So anyway, that's the card that I'm going to be on right now out of this set. It's the only one that I feel really strong about. Another thing that was spoiled today was Goblin Piledriver and this just came out of left field. I didn't see this coming at all. So Goblin Piledriver is an $18 card from Onslaught and the foils on those are go for about 40 I think. Now back in 2007, 2008 and right before the extended type of tournaments was extinguished by Wizards of the Coast, Goblins was a tier 2 deck. It finished in quite a few top 8s in 2008, 2007 season and maybe even 2009 season. Uh, and it actually won a PTQ back in 2008 I believe. And I suspect that Wizards wants to bring Goblins back to modern. There's a handful of cards in the set that kind of look like they're put in there so that Modern could get them back into the cycle because Goblin Paul Driver was gone. The whole Goblins deck was for the most part gone. I, I did see a Goblins deck basically playing for the top eight about six months ago at the SCG Open here, which was pretty interesting. But Goblin Paul Driver is a guy that can really push it over the edge. I would not be surprised if Goblin Ringleader was also reprinted in this set. After seeing Sylvan Messenger and Goblin Piledriver, it's probably coming too. Really excited about some of the cards here as far as playability. And as a fan of Magic, I really like these cards. But again, the one that I'm really on right now is Foil Shaman of the Pack. So that's what I'm going to be on. I'll be looking on eBay as soon as I can find those. I will grab them. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out and happy trading.